Hello students, this is Professor Lopez and today we're covering ACE inhibitors in under 15 minutes. That is including two NCLEX style questions, one of them being a multiple choice and one of them being a select all that apply. As a pharmacology professor, I have noticed that cardiac exams and medications are usually a topic that is suffered on on exam scores. The objective of this video is to make this information more easily digestible for you guys to improve your exam scores and increase your chances of passing your pharmacology class. With that said, we're going to go over things such as the suffix for ACE inhibitors, the key points as a nurse, the mechanism of action. So how does this medication do what we say it does? The side effects. What are the most common side effects for this medication classification that you may encounter on your NCLEX? And lastly, we'll do two questions pertaining to ACE inhibitors to test your knowledge on them. For ACE inhibitors, they are a very, very polite medication classification as they all share the same suffix class. When medications share the same suffix, by you learning that suffix, you are able to identify what is an ACE inhibitor and what isn't. For ACE inhibitors, they all share the PRIL suffix. The PRIL suffix, as you see in the examples, lisinopril, captopril, enalapril, benzopril, all of them end in that PRIL. So if you can identify PRIL as an ACE inhibitors, you can make the knowledge correlation to its side effects as well as its mechanism of action. So when you see PRIL, I need you to make the identification that this is an ACE inhibitor. Now that we can identify what an ACE inhibitor is in relation to its suffix, why should a patient take an ACE inhibitor and why do they? As a nurse, you need to be able to make this specific distinction to identify if your patient is receiving the correct medications. So why ACE inhibitors? Well, for the most part, it is an antihypertensive medication, specifically a first line antihypertensive for your renal population. Individuals suffering from diabetes and renal issues are more than likely going to be on an ACE inhibitor if they suffer from hypertension. That is a very important topic to engrave in your mind, guys. Renal protective properties. Aside from hypertension, it also aids in the treatment of heart failure and treatment post myocardial infarction. So if a client has suffered from an MI, this is the antihypertensive of choice for cardiac protection. So first line antihypertensive treatment, renal protection, systolic heart failure, and post-MI treatment. Now that we can distinguish what an ACE inhibitor is and why do patients take them, how do they accomplish what they do? As a pharmacology instructor, I highly emphasize the mechanism of action of medications. As as a nurse, you need to be able to understand why are your patients taking this? What is it doing in the human body? ACE inhibitors specifically prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This prevention is the prevention of vasoconstriction. When angiotensin 1 converts to angiotensin 2, vasoconstriction occurs in the blood vessels. These medications specifically prevent that vasoconstriction from occurring, thus promoting vasodilation. And as nursing students, we understand that when vasodilation occurs, drops in blood pressure occur, which is one of the objectives of this medication. Now that we understand what an ACE inhibitor is, what disease process it treats, and what this medication does in the body. Let's explore the side effects associated with it. These are the four most common side effects that you are going to see in regards to your NCLEX. As well, at the end, I have a mnemonic to assist in memorizing these, as well as what as a nurse are we going to do to monitor for these side effects, and just in general for individuals on ACE inhibitors. The first side effect we are going to cover is what I like to label as the paramount sign and symptom of ACE inhibitors. The paramount side effect of ACE inhibitors is your dry, non-productive cough. Individuals on ACE inhibitors have the potential to have a dry, non-productive cough. This is a dry cough that is non-infectious, not correlated to a bacterial or viral process, it is solely related to the breakdown of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. 
This causes an accumulation of what we call bradykins, which are a specific mediator in inside our body. And the only way to abolish this cough is by switching them to an alternative medication. So I need you to make the correlation of an ACE inhibitor, which is our PRILS, and dry non-productive cough. This is a very, very, very common topic for nursing school. Side effect number two is angioedema. And this is a very, very, very important sign and symptom as a nurse to monitor for. As I labeled it, it is the most life-threatening side effect associated with ACE inhibitors. Angioedema resembles a allergic reaction, specifically anaphylaxis. So when a patient exhibits signs and symptoms of angioedema, they're going to be short of breath, swelling to the face, tongue, and throat. These are life-threatening side effects. So as a nurse, what are we supposed to do? Number one, you need to assess the patient's history specifically related to ACE inhibitors. And number two, familial history. So have your mother or father specifically taken ACE and had a reaction. If they have, this is information that must be reported to the medical provider. Our third side effect is going to be our first dose phenomenon. And as you see by the asterisks and capitals, this is another large safety risk, which as we understand, NCLEX loves to test for safety concerns. They want to make sure that you are a safe and effective nurse who can provide care. First dose phenomenon is the uh, side effect associated with profound orthostatic hypotension and potential syncope. So these patients are going to have large drops in their blood pressure, specifically when changing positions, and number two, episodes of syncope. This is not only a safety risk class, but a potential for non-adherence. Patients don't like feeling dizzy. They do not like fainting. It is a very scary situation to be in, which normally causes them to stop their medication and prevent the side effects that we would like to happen, such as lowering the blood pressure. So you're going to educate your patient. Educate, educate, educate is one of the main roles of a nurse. We, we reinforce education, students. So we would like to educate the patient. Please change positions slowly. Please be careful when changing positions. Dangle your legs when standing up over a bed. Stand up in place prior to walking. These are just some minor things that may prevent a syncope episode. Lastly, those are three of our side effects. Our fourth is hyperkalemia. As we understand, hyperkalemia is a potassium higher than five, higher than five. ACE inhibitors have the potential to cause increases in potassium. Us knowing that a large population that takes this medication are renal patients, it is a more common side effect and causes more vigilance as a nurse in our assessment. We need to assess these patients. We need to assess their cardiac rhythms if they are admitted in a hospital, if you're working in a med surge floor or in just a doctor's office, if they're having a routine EKG. What we are going to monitor for is their cardiac rhythm. A common test question that you're going to see is which specific dysrhythmia would you be scared of in regards to ACE inhibitors? And that would be a peaked T wave. Peak T waves have a causative factor of hyperkalemia. So when you see hyperkalemia, think peaked T waves. ACE inhibitors cause hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia cause peaked T waves. Educate your patients as well as to avoid high potassium foods or salt substitutes. Salt substitutes is a big one that NCLEX likes to bring up because patients with hypertension normally avoid sodium products, which are unfortunately low in sodium, but high in potassium. So this specific medication, you do not want to have your patients with sodium replacements. A mnemonic to assist you guys in memorizing three of the four side effects is ACE. We're talking about ACE inhibitors by utilizing the mnemonic ACE. You can remember that angioedema, the A, C being dry cough, or cough, just remember that it's a dry, non-productive cough, and the E being an elevated potassium. So A, angioedema, C, cough, a dry cough, and E, elevated potassium. 
as a nurse, what are some responsibilities that we need to be very vigilant about? Number one, with any, and I emphasize any antihypertensive med, you need to monitor the blood pressure and heart rate. If there is a blood pressure less than 90 over 60, your patient should not receive his dose of his antihypertensive med. So monitor that blood pressure. Monitor potassium and the electrical rhythm, specifically for elevated T waves. Elevated T waves. And educate, educate, educate. You need to educate your patients about not only the first dose phenomenon, but the incidence of dry coughs. If they encounter that dry cough, if they do not report this to us or the medical providers, they cannot be assisted. So educate them. If you experience a dry cough, please contact either the healthcare clinic, please come back and be seen, or report this to your healthcare provider so we can change it to an alternative medication. So clocking in at 11 minutes, class, we have identified what an ACE inhibitor is, key points, who takes ACE inhibitors, we have targeted the mechanism of action. So what happens when you take an ACE inhibitor? And we have targeted the four most common testing side effects that we will encounter in nursing school. With that being said, I have two NCLEX style questions, one of them being a multiple choice and the second being a select all that apply question. With both of these students, I would like you to pause the screen when the question comes on the screen. That is so that you can digest the question and pick your answer before I say it out loud. Our first question is a regular multiple choice question, and it is a client presents to the healthcare setting after beginning treatment with an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Which of the following medications belongs to this medication classification? Is it A, lisinopril, B, losartan, C, furosemide, or D, labetalol? The answer, if you chose A, you are correct. As we know, the pril suffix, by us being able to identify ACE inhibitor is a pril, we can answer this question and receive a correct answer. B, if you've gone over your other cardiac medications, if you see that sartan suffix, you need to know that's an angiotensin receptor blocker. C, furosemide is a loop diuretic, also known as Lasix. And D is labetalol, which is a beta blocker with that lol suffix. Our second question is a select all that apply. And as we know, these are very prevalent questions in nursing school and we need to familiarize ourselves with beta blockers. Our second question is a nurse is caring for a client who has been taking an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor for the treatment of hypertension. Which of the following side effects is associated with ACE inhibitors? So we need to identify which ones are and which ones are not side effects. A is hypokalemia, B is a dry, non-productive cough, C, the first dose phenomenon, D, angioedema, and E, bradycardia. Let's start and break down each one as if this is a regular multiple choice question. A, hypokalemia is not true. Remember, with the acronym ACE, the E is elevated potassium. B, a dry, non-productive cough. That is one of our choices. As we know, this is the paramount side effect associated with ACE inhibitors. C, the first dose phenomenon. That is true and pertains to this specific medication classification. D, is angioedema. That is the A of our ACE mnemonic. This is a correct answer. And E, bradycardia, that is not correct. This is a side, uh, side effect that normally is associated with beta blockers. So if you pick B, C, and D, you are correct. That concludes our presentation regarding ACE inhibitors, students. If you like this type of content, again, feel free to give me a follow, like, and comment below as I will be posting more medications to help you succeed in your pharmacology class.